Hello my dears, it's Katie and it's that time of year again where I talk about all of the books I've removed from my TBR. And when I say removed from my TBR, I don't mean, you know, books that I've read this year or books that, you know, I just took off willy-nilly one way or another, whether it was because it was a, a sec subsequent book in a series or like the earlier video that I did this year, books that I was on the fence about. No, these are the books that I have decided that I'm just not going to read. I just removed them because I'm either not going to read them because I'm just no longer interested in them, or um, like last year when I did my um, on the fence about video, I ended up keeping some of those books with the intent of actually reading them. And then this year I was going through my TBR again and I saw those same books and I was like, I literally have no interest in reading these. So then I just took them off and I'm like, you know, I was already on the fence about them before. I'm kind of still on the fence about them now, but at the same time, do I really want to read these? No. So then I removed them. Um, so basically what ended up happening this year is I was a lot harsher with the books that I decided to keep on my TBR, I, every single time I went through it, and I did it a lot because I was stressed out a lot. You guys probably saw my video of why I obsess over my TBR. If not, I'll link it up above for you guys. But every time I went through it, I looked at every single book and I asked myself, is this something I can actually 100% say I'm going to read? or if not 100%, that it's a high enough certainty that I will read this book. And if the answer was no, or even slightly below yes, I would choose to remove it and put it on either, you know, my on the fence about, or my removing completely lists. And it was not an easy decision to remove some of these, but just knowing myself that the way that I do, I'm not going to get to any of them. So it's not all of that rationale. I'm really not going to explain much of my reasoning behind why I've removed these books, um, because they're, they tend to fall into one of the categories that I mentioned. But there might be one or two where I feel like I want to go into a little bit more depth on. But overall, there are 31 books on this list. That's a lot less than last year, but still a fair amount. And um, I'm pretty satisfied with my list, so let's just get into them. So the first book that I removed this year was The Tiger's Daughter by K.R. Sinalt Rivera. I've heard just so many um, uncomfortable things about this series um, from people who are POC from the area that is being portrayed, and it's not good things. So because of that, I am going to give that one a skip. And that also means that the second book that I removed was The Phoenix Empress, also by K. Arsenal Rivera. Then, then the next three books are Break No Bones, Bones to Ashes, and Virals, all by Kathy Rikes. Now, I love Kathy Rikes. She was the inspiration, or her Temperance Brennan novels were the inspiration for one of my all-time favorite TV shows, Bones. If you guys haven't watched it, definitely go check it out. It is so good. It's still one of my favorites. I always go back and revisit it from time to time because it just brings me so much joy. Um, but I read her first Temperance Brennan novel a while back, like high school, and I just wasn't feeling it for some reason. It just wasn't for me. And even though these uh, some of these other books, like Breaking Up Bones and Bones to Ashes, were books in the same series and I could have given them a try. Ultimately, I just decided I didn't want to commit to that and put it down. And then as for Virals, that's her YA sci-fi novel. 
and I've heard mixed things about it and since I'm kind of weird with sci-fi sometimes I decided to give that one a miss too. Then next the next two books are Support and Defend and Full Force and Effect by Mark Graney and I believe those were the were some books in the Jack Ryan series but I just saw that they were written by a different author I think it was than the original author and I was like mm, that makes me uncomfortable so I just removed those and then I think I ultimately ended up removing the entire Jack Ryan series too but I uh, got rid of those then I also got rid of Under Fire by Grant Blackwood, Commander in Chief by Mark Greeny, Tom Clancy, Duty and Honor by Grant Blackwood, True, Truth, and Allegiance by Mark Greeny. And those are all, do I want to call them spy novels or do I want to call them like espionage? I think they're more espionage-y. Um, but everyone I've talked to, except for a handful of people, say the movies are better. And I have seen quite a few movies from that series, and I really enjoyed them. So I thought I was going to like the books, but a lot of people are telling me that the books aren't as good. But I think it'll just depend on who you talk to. So for now, those are just going to be off my list. Plus, as I said, I'm pretty sure those were all books that were written by a different author because I think Tom Clancy wrote the Jack Ryan series and if I were to read any of the series it would be by Tom Clancy rather than these other random authors so I think that also might have been my logic behind that. Then the next one I removed was The Seafarer's Kiss by Julia Ember. I don't remember what it's even about. I think I always confused it with another book I think it's called like She Rises and I feel like I'd heard really mixed things about the Sea Bears Kiss and I don't know even though it sounds like something I would like at the same time I think it doesn't I don't remember why I removed it but here we are then the next one I got rid of is Chronicles of Aramisia by SM Lee that's a um, FF kind of gladiatorial novel um, and I think there was a reason I got rid of it too because like it sounds like it would be really awesome and like something that I'd like but there was a very specific reason I got rid of it and it might have just been like out of all of the other novels out there that one was lower on my list and I was like am I realistically gonna read this probably not I think that might have been what it was but who even knows anymore then I got rid of The Secret History by Donna Tartt. A lot of you guys voted in this one last year for me to keep it and give it a try, but it was a very close poll. And since then, I've heard very, very, um, very, very complex thoughts and feelings on those books. And I'm not sure if I'd like it. And I'm not sure if I want to read it and find out because there are other books that I'm prioritizing and other books that I'm more interested in. Next five books are First Rider's Call, The High King's Tomb, Black Veil, Mirror Sight, and Firebrand, all by Kristen Britton. And I just removed all of those because I hated Green Rider. Like, I just didn't like that book. So I was like, why do I want to continue on with the next books in the series? That just doesn't sound like something that I'm interested in, like something that I want to participate in. Um, like something that I just don't want to continue on with because I just didn't like the first book. Then the next one is The Kiss of Deception by Mary E. Pearson. I... I've heard so many mixed things about it. A lot of people voted on this one last year too to say that it's um, a book that I should keep on my TBR, but ultimately I just looked at it and I'm like, this doesn't sound like it's for me. And then I've also talked to a few people I know who've read it and we have similar tastes and they didn't really like it that much and they told me that I probably also would not like it that much. So I decided to give that one a miss for now. 
And the next one I took off is called The Tombs by Deborah Schomburg. And really the only reason I got rid of this one is because it's an urban fantasy and I have very, very complicated relationships with urban fantasy, as in I tend not to like most urban fantasies I've read, but I don't know, it sounds intriguing and it sounds really, really interesting and like something that I probably like, but because it's an urban fantasy, I decided to give that one a miss. And then the next one might shock some people, but maybe not, and it is 112263 by Stephen King. This is a JFK kind of historical fiction-y foray for Stephen King, and I just am absolutely fascinated with JFK and JFK's death and conspiracies. Yeah, I'm one of those people. Um, so I figured I'd really like it, but then at the same time, like, it is a large book, and... I don't know, I reread the summary and I'm like, mm, I'm not so sure about this one. So I'm just not sure how I feel about it. So for right now, I'm going to give that one a miss. And the next one I got rid of is The Cuckoo's Calling by Robert Galbraith, aka J.K. Rowling. I have come to a very big decision to no longer want to read any of other any other JK Rowling books other than you know rereading Harry Potter and everything while they sound at least the Robert Galbraith series sounds really interesting I I don't know if I want to read it right now and you know I talked to several people about the series who's, who've at least read the first one and they thought it was not great predictable like mystery whatever and since I like mysteries and in order for me to like mysteries they need to be a bit more unpredictable like Agatha Christie is my mystery queen so to top her work you need to be great at the mystery telling story adventure and from what I've heard from some people who know the types of mysteries that I like, typically older mysteries, now that I'm really sitting back and thinking about it, it just doesn't sound like it's for me, unfortunately. So I'm giving that one a miss. Then the next three that I'm getting rid of are The Rebel of the Sands, Traitor to the Throne, and Here at the Fall, all by Alwyn Hamilton. I've heard very complex and um, conflicting thoughts and feelings from people on that trilogy. And just hearing people who are actually own voices, reviews and things, they were really talking about how terrible the representation was for it. So I'm probably not gonna read it just because I you know, while I want to explore more diverse fantasy, I want it to be diverse fantasy where I can read own voices reviews and hear own voices reviewers, not just one, but like multiple, say that they really liked it and they thought it was very well done. I just need that extra part of it in order for it to be a thing. And then I got rid of A Discovery of Witches by Deborah Harkness. I have complex relationships with supernatural books. That's pretty much what I'm going to tell you. Um, I like supernatural kinds of shows and things, but when it comes to books, they can be a hit or a miss for me. And it's complicated. So that's where I'm at on that one. Then the next one is The Last Magician by Lisa Maxwell. Urban fantasy. It's once again, urban fantasy, not generally something that I like. And um, that's pretty much rid of that. I think also supernatural elements, correct me if I'm wrong on that. Um, but yeah, just the combination of those two things just did not 
called to me. Also, I think people have compared it to a series I really didn't like, but I don't remember what series it was. Because it was like a combination of The Diviners and was it City of Bones? I don't know, but that right there is enough to just for it to be a no for me because I just, yeah, not for me. And then I got rid of uh, Black Leopard, Red Wolf by Marlon James. Most of the reason I got rid of this book is because every review I read, no matter who it was, talked about how gruesome, graphic, and gory it was. And gore doesn't bother me, but the fact that there is rape on literally every page or bestiality and things of that sort, child abuse, I was just like, all of those things, and if you're saying it's that frequent, uh, not for me. And I mean, I've seen, of course, several male reviewers, you know, defend it and talk about how brutal, like, history of that area was. And fine, but at the same time, it does not need to be on every single page. You get the point, like, no thank you. I don't care. Also, just the treatment of women I've also heard is absolutely disgusting. And I'm like, mm, been there, done that. Still live in it in some ways. So no thanks. Bye. So yeah, just had to get rid of that one. And then I got rid of The Power by Nomi Alderman. I've heard several mixed things about this book. It has a really intriguing premise, but ultimately I decided it wasn't for me because of certain people I was talking to and their reactions to it. Um, so ultimately I was like, mm, no. And I also included it, I think, in a poll last year and people voted on me, voted for me to keep it. And I did, but then I decided to get rid of it and also realistically I was like I'm probably never gonna read this so it left goodbye and the last one is gonna surprise literally everyone and I'm really 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 upset about this one actually but I have a very good reason for getting rid of it and it is something that is completely out of my control um, and I will 100% put it back on my TBR if someone can find me a copy somewhere. But uh, that is Harpy's Flight by Megan Lindholm. And Meg, if you don't, in case you don't know, Megan Lindholm is Robin Hobb. Um, sadly, that series, I think it's called the Windsingers series, um, sadly it's gone out of print. So because it's gone out of print, <laughs> I literally can't find copies of any of those books anywhere. Yeah, I'm really disappointed by it. I mean, they have one on Amazon for like $200 or something, and I'm like, mm, that's not worth it for a, you know, two to 300 page book. Like, that's just, that doesn't make sense to me. Um, but. I can't find it anywhere else. So if someone finds someone somewhere, whether it's like a charity shop or something, um, let me know <laughs> so I can actually read it. But um, yeah, I'm really, really bummed out about that one. But anyway, those are all of the books that I have officially removed from my TBR this year. There are others because, as I said, or as you guys might know, I did the poll on uh, Twitter for the books that were on my on the on, on the fence about, and I removed quite a few books from that. But I'm not including that in this video because they weren't the original. I'm getting rid of these books list, if you know what I mean. So that's where we're at and um, I'm feeling pretty good about it and I'd be interested to hear what your thoughts on this is. Are there any books on here that surprised you? Are there any books on here that you're not surprised about? Um, don't ask me to try and keep any of them because I've already definitively made up my mind on them. Um, I will not be 
convinced to keep any of them at this juncture. Maybe down the line, I'll reconsider. But um, I guess if you want to, just like out of the ones that I mentioned, you can put like your number one book that you think and down the road I should potentially give a try to. Um, so yeah, you can do that if you want. But other than that, you guys know the drill. I have all of my social media links down below in the description. I have my Twitter, which is at a sea of tones, which is the same as my handle here. I also have my Goodreads page linked down below, and you guys can go over there, follow me, see what I'm reading, track my progress, and see my general superficial thoughts on things before I come and scream at you about them over here. And of course, I also have my ships and fandoms page linked down below for your viewing pleasure. But other than that, I'll catch you later in another video for you guys again soon. Bye!